Gerard. This shirt appears to have French cuffs. Can you please get me my cufflinks? The silver ones that are right up. Okay, thank you. Oh. Perfect, thank you. No, that's okay. I can manage on my own. My father always said, if you can't put on your own cufflinks, then what kind of man are you? I'm not really quite sure what that meant, but I learned how to do it myself and how to tie my own tie as well. I wanted to let you know that a friend is going to be coming over shortly, actually, and I'm going to be having dinner with them here in the formal dining room. So, can you please have the chef make uh, an extra portion for my friend? Okay. Of the pheasant under glass. Because it is Thursday. And I have pheasant under glass every Thursday, as you know, Gerard. You have been my butler for what? About four years now. I think I'll have some tea before they get here. Ah. Ooh, that's a little hot, Gerard. Would you mind pouring that for me? Okay. Great, thank you very much. Uh, let's see, I'll take a little bit of sugar. Monday, and I'm going to need some dry cleaning done by then. Um, my gray suit, the uh, the Ralph Lauren one, 
Can you please have that sent to the cleaners? Okay? Thank you. Hmm. It appears my Mont Blanc is out of ink. Do you have a pencil on you? Thank you. My, it's not very sharp, but that it'll do. Yes, Gerard. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, my friend is just coming over. We're just going to have a nice evening together. We're going to talk about literature, art, fine wines, maybe some world news, things like that. It's just a very casual evening, but I would like to be in the formal dining room because this person is um, very wealthy and I'm hoping to get a donation from them for the foundation that I am starting. That's right. Okay. Uh, what are the linens that they have at the table? These are the linens for the table. Okay. Hmm. They seem to be very nice. White linen. And I believe this is Turkish linen. Is that right? will do, these napkins. Uh, they are a little bit wrinkly, so can you please have the maid iron them before putting them onto the table? Okay. Uh, I got the 
this as a gift the other day from good friend named Adair. I haven't really learned to play much with it, but when I'm kind of feeling a little stressed, I just take this out and just pluck out a few nice notes, and that seems to calm me down quite a bit. That's my friend at the door. Can you bring them into the study, please? Okay. Oh, hello. There you are. It's very nice to see you. Please have a seat and make yourself comfortable. Can I get you anything to drink to start off? Okay, a little bit of brandy. Absolutely. I've got some here. Let me just, I was just having a little tea before you arrived, so I decided to, um, have a little brandy ready for us as well. These beautiful Waterford Crystal glasses. These are my favorite brandy glasses. This beautiful cut crystal. I believe that you have the same pattern, if I'm not mistaken. Is that right? Yes? I cannot remember the name, but it is a very deluxe pattern and has the, the matching ship's container. So anyway, this is a fine uh, uh, oak, French oak barrel brandy that I got last year when I was in Paris. Okay, is that enough? Okay, I think I'm gonna have a little bit myself. Okay. Put that back on. Well, cheers. Got 
this because I know what a big fan you are of Thoreau's work. So, I got this for you. Do you like it? It's beautiful leather bound. It has this gold leaf inlay. And, of course, the beautiful gold leaf edges of the pages. And I just have to... I bookmarked one page in here. One of my favorite sections of the book called Solitude. And I just have to read this first paragraph because I think you'll love it. This is a delicious evening when the whole body is one sense and imbibes delight through every pore. I go and come with a strange liberty in nature, a part of herself. As I walk along the stony shore of the pond in my shirt sleeves, though it is cool as well as cloudy and windy, and I see nothing special to attract me. All the elements are unusually congenial to me. The bullfrogs trump to usher in the night, and the note of the whippoorwill is born on the rippling wind from over the water. Isn't that absolutely profound and beautiful. So, I knew you would like this. So I, when I saw it, I told my book dealer, I want that book. I know just the person who would appreciate it. There you go. You're welcome. Absolutely. Anytime. Oh, I want to show you this. Look at this that I got recently. This is actually an antique Kalimba. It sounds amazing, doesn't it? It's almost like the one that you got for your daughter a few years ago, I believe. I think it's a similar, based on the engraving that I can see on the inside there of the wooden body. Right in there, yeah. Yes, Gerard. Uh, the chef has proposed what for dinner? Let me. What is this? Singapore curry, Nick. What? This is supposed to be for dinner tonight my friend. Okay. Um, and what is this? You put water? You put water in this and then heat it? is not what I asked for, Gerard. I specifically said that I'm having pheasant under glass, as I do every Thursday. All right, so please tell the chef, Tatiana, no to the Singapore curry noodles, and to please have her make the pheasant under glass as I requested. All right? Thank you. Sorry. My chef Tatiana likes uh, to come up sometimes with little shortcuts for dinners. 
I think she thinks I need to lose a little bit of weight, so she keeps proposing these sort of healthy little noodle soup things. I don't know. Anyway, not interested at all. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Life is too short to be eating noodles out of a cup. Who wants that? I don't. No. Well, speaking of Singapore, how was your trip to China recently? Didn't you go there on business? You did. How was it? Mm -hmm. Really? Wow. They have amazing pottery and vases in that in that particular market. I remember that when I went there. Actually, I have this thing right over here, this little vase. This is the one I got from China, one of these. This is like an ancient Ming Dynasty cloisonne sort of vase. And uh, I just love the color. And, uh, you know, I've got all these shelves in my study, so I've got things, I've got to have things to put on them. So I pick up these vases and antiquities here and there as I'm traveling around the world. And, uh, yeah, I really like this. And, like, look at the beautiful, intricate design here. I love that. It's that beautiful sort of floral pattern in there. And, uh, and I love how on the inside they told me that this makes it even more valuable that the, the pattern goes uh, on the inside and all that intricate detail that they put into the brass and the uh, enamel that they use to make that makes this particular face extra valuable. So I said, excellent. I'll take it. Oh, did you? Mm hmm Oh. Yes, I remember seeing that one. That large, almost like an urn, right? Yeah. That was beautiful. I love that, too. Yes. Oh. Speaking of beautiful objects. Uh, I wanted to show you, I got, I'm, I'm considering getting this painting, and I just wanted to get your opinion on it, because I'm not really sure. I had my art dealer come over the other day, and just bring it, and just sort of loan it to me for a few days, so I can kind of live with it, and see if I like it, but I'd be interested to get your opinion, because I know what an expert you are on art. Okay. Okay, this is beautiful. Let me see, I want to make sure I get it right side up. <laughs> what do you think about that? It's sort of an impressionist. It is uh, an early Monet, actually. And uh, my art dealer said that it was found in the attic of a widow who had collected art for many, many years, and actually it was her grandmother who acquired this piece and gave it to her. She didn't know who actually painted it, and so she just stuck it away in her attic, and anyway, her estate found it up there, and somebody recognized and said, that looks like it could be a Monet. And they did some forensics on it, and what do you know? It was a Monet, or it is a Monet.
a very different type of uh, style from Monet, but this was his earlier work when he began dabbling in Impressionism, apparently. So I really love the beautiful colors that, that he used, and I don't know, what do you think? Oh, oh, yes, such interesting brush strokes, very, very, um, almost haphazard, you could say, and yes, you're right, that was the very beginning of his exploration of the uh, Impressionist. Yes, okay, so you kind of like it, mm -hmm. how much is it? Well, it isn't cheap, I'll tell you that, but uh, I'm, I'm going to be doing a deal soon. Uh, I'm, I'm close to closing it, and I think that once I do, that that's going to give me uh, plenty of money to play around with, and I think that this would be a good investment. And I have that wall over there in my study right over there. I thought it would go really well over there, don't you think? So what do you think? Should I take it or not? I should take it. I'm gonna take it. Oh, Gerard, hey, um, can you tell my art dealer, just give him a call tomorrow and tell him I'm gonna take this painting and I'll arrange payment with him. Okay. All right. Great. Thanks. Well, thank you so much for your opinion and your excellent analysis. Oh, yes, Gerard. Oh, uh, let's see. Is this, yes, this is the, this is the jacket that I want dry cleaned. Uh, let me just make sure I don't have anything in the pockets. I don't want to leave any money in there or... What's that? Oh, it's just all a package of tissues. Can I give that to you, Gerard? Great, thank you. Let's see, nothing in there. Oh, that's just some breath mints. I, can, I always keep those with me. You never know when you're going to need them. Wait a minute. There's another inside pocket here. I don't know why I always seem to use every single pocket in all of my jackets. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah, this is a, this is a, a Ralph Lauren, um, it's just very simple, but uh, this is from his private collection. Uh, I went to New York City uh, a few years ago, and I went to the, um, the store that's on Madison Avenue, that really beautiful store, and uh, the, uh, the lead uh, person there, the manager, I guess he is, uh, uh, took me up to uh, to the special fitting rooms and uh, showed me a bunch of the new things from the special private collection. And I just saw this and I thought it's really nice. I just absolutely love that material. It's like really soft, but at the same time, it's got a really nice texture. Feel it? Right? Yeah. I just really liked it, so I said I'll take it. Great, okay. Thanks, Gerard. That'll be great. So, how is your brandy doing? Do you need any more? We're going to have a great bottle of wine for dinner. Yes, I 
I had Gerard go get something out of the cellar that I got. Um, this is a, a Chateau Neuf de Pop, and I got this in Paris. Let's see. I got it about nine or ten years ago now, and uh, when I got it, they said, this will sell her beautifully. Just keep it down in your cellar for anywhere from five to 15 years, and it'll be absolutely beautiful. So I think it's about ready. So, plus I need to make a little room because I'm going to Paris again in a few months, and I'm going to get a few more cases of a different type of wine that I absolutely love, so I just need to make a little bit of room in my wine cellar. Yeah, you know exactly what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Oh, well that reminds me. Let me, do you mind if I just make a quick note in my diary about that trip? I just remembered. I have, I've got my Mont Blanc pen, but I was riding with it. This is my favorite pen, as you know, and uh, it just ran out of ink, so I'm going to have to have it filled with ink. So, so how's business going, by the way? Oh, you're, oh, really? That's amazing. Well, you know, with the uh, all the inflation going on, I know the cost of business has been going up, but it's great that you've been able to keep your prices down so that the demand continues. Yeah, that's the trick. Thanks for letting me do that. Mm -hmm. What's... Oh, this? Oh, yeah. Isn't this beautiful? It's a... Uh, this is actually, I believe, um, it's a uh, Limoges. And I got this... Uh, gosh, it's been a long time. This is like... I originally got this as a gift for um, somebody I was dating at the time, but then I broke up with them shortly after I got it, so I decided to keep it instead of giving it to them, so I'm glad I did. Anyway, yeah, it's really, it's actually an antique, and uh, yeah, yeah, this is all gold leaf, and I use it to make potpourri in, believe it or not. Yeah, I like potpourri. I've got these, uh, I just got some of these things actually right now. This, this is, these are dried up, uh, rose leaves. And, but these are not any rose leaves. I got these again when I was in Paris, and uh, they come from the rose bushes that are at the Versailles. Because the rose bushes in the Versailles gardens are absolutely spectacular, and they're completely organic. And so when the roses bloom, and they're in full bloom, and just as they're about to start fading, they pick all of the petals, and they dry them, and they all have the most beautiful perfume. You can probably smell it from over there, can't you? So.
So what I like to do is, and I just put them in this dish. Just put a few there. I don't know why I'm obsessed with potpourri, but I've been obsessed with potpourri since the 80s. But that crap you buy in the stores is just terrible, though. It's all full of chemical perfumes and artificial scents and colors. Mmm, that just smells so nice. And then I also got these orange peel here. smell that as soon as I open it. Beautiful, fragrant orange. And uh, so what I like to do is put a little bit of that in here as well. Just put a little spoon of that in here. Like this. because it's quite a strong scent. And then to add just sort of like a little bit of a darker, spicy note to the potpourri, I, I got these, uh, these allspice berries, the dried allspice berries. And I put a few of those because they go really nice to give it a, a base note. So then I just put like a little spoon of those in there. Just a little bit because they're, they're quite strong in scent as well. I just sprinkle it right on top like that. And that's it. And then, oh, just smell that combination of scent. Isn't that amazing? Hmm, it's really beautiful. And sometimes I put the lid on. I keep the lid on most of the time because the scent actually comes out. But then when I want to fill up the room, the study, because sometimes those books back there, they can get a little musty smelling. So then I just open that up and it just smells absolutely beautiful. So anyway, that's what I got this for years ago, and, uh, and I still use it for potpourri of all things. I know, I don't look like a potpourri guy, do I? But I love it. I really do. Put these away over here. Oh, so how are you doing with your drink? Do you need a refill? Looks like you need a refill. Yeah, I thought so. Okay. So what do you think of this beautiful brandy? It's really nice, isn't it? I just love that sort of the oakiness and the smokiness that it gets from the French uh, oak barrels that they store it in. Is that good enough? Yeah, okay. Don't want to get you too drunk before dinner. Okay, there you go. Enjoy. What's that? Oh, this over here? Oh, yeah. Uh, this is... Uh, gosh, I've had this for years. This is the, the Visionaire number 24. Remember that publication, that uh, art publication from years ago? I think they're still going, actually, but uh, called Visionaire. And this was one of their, I believe this is, this is the Tom Ford for Gucci. 
that they did uh, this year. Let me here, I'll show it to you. It's really cool, this one. Of course, it's all black. Barry Tom Ford. Anyway, that's the case that it comes in. And this came with a CD. And I put it in a plastic bag to protect it because I didn't want it to get it scratched up. And it's got this sort of meditation music on it with just like little bells that are sort of going and uh, I just find it so soothing and relaxing. But I made a digital copy of that so that I always have it. Now this actually comes with a light box this particular edition. And I do not believe, let me just see here, I do not believe that the light box, ah, no. As you can see, it comes with a whole bunch of batteries. There's one, two, three, four, five, ten double-A batteries it takes. And then this whole thing lights up here. And these are all I'll show you a few of them. You can kind of see the pictures a little bit. There's sort of these uh these pictures that you can see through the light box. Like I don't have I wish I could show you, but they almost look like negatives a bit, but I don't see that. You can kind of see that there's like a photograph in there. Anyway, so there are a whole bunch of images like that. There's probably about like 25 or so of these images in here. Anyway, this, is, this one was a really interesting addition. Um, it's, I think it's one of their more valuable ones as well. So, of course, your eye picked that up. And, oh, I'll show you the other one that I've got, too. This one was a really interesting one. Another visionaire. This was number 26. And this one, I believe, was... So, you know, as you know... They're all numbered. This is 744. This one was, I, I think this was Lagerfeld, if I'm correct. This was curated by Carl Lagerfeld. And uh, let me just show you. All of the photographs are round. wasn't Lagerfeld, that's the other one I have in a wooden box. So this is Hermes. And comes with this, it came with this little sort of mask with some Hermes silk. And this one's called Fantasy. some of these photographs. Isn't that interesting? So all, all round. So there's one image. Oh, there's images on the front and the back of these cards. isn't it? I like that. Yeah, isn't that cool? And anyway, it's just all these really cool images. Look at that one. I like 
this one is kind of interesting. What do you think of that one? Yeah. The problem with the round photograph is you're not exactly sure which way is up or sideways. So this was a great addition as well. Do you have a few of these Visionaire publications? I thought I remember seeing, actually I think I, you're the one who showed me them originally and suggested that I collect them. Well, I'm glad you did because they're now worth a little bit of money. All these years later. Gerard. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So dinner is going to be ready soon. All right. Thanks for letting us know. We'll be down shortly. All right. Well, it looks like dinner is nearly ready. So, anyway, I, I just want to thank you, by the way, for coming over tonight and, uh, spending a little time. It's been a while since we've seen each other. So, yeah. So I thought it'd be nice just to have a nice casual dinner and look at some art, some photographs, drink some, some good brandy, and uh, have some good food. Hopefully it would be good. Oh, yeah, well, thanks for asking. The, um, the foundation is coming along really well, actually. I've got the board of directors all selected, and we've already got our first round of funding coming in, and it's really going really well. Yeah. I was actually kind of hoping that maybe you might be interested in um, being one of the founding funders, basically. You would? That sounds great. Okay. Well, cheers to that. Well, I really appreciate you offering, and uh, why don't we just 
go down to the dining room now and have a little bit of dinner and we can talk about everything there. All right, great. Okay, uh, Gerard, yeah, can you bring, can you bring their drink down? And mine as well. We're gonna head down now to the dining room, okay? All right, all right, let's go. <laughs>